and welcome once again, everybody. We are doing the RDA Tech Q and A here. Um, I am Nash. I normally do RDA, but in addition to that, I've got over a decade's worth of uh, computer and technical repair and stuff. With me, as always, my host, producer Mike. He um, Hello. has similar experiences in the areas of technology. Mike, say something so make sure your levels are okay. Um, I don't know. Are my levels okay? Your levels are okay. We're good. Hey, everything worked on the first try this week. That's oh. novel. I'm shocked, too. That's novel. So we got a lot of your questions coming up. Um, if you have questions you'd like to ask us to hopefully potentially solve some technical issues for you, send them to requests at radiodeadair.com. We will endeavor to get them on the air for you tonight. Maybe okay. something important before we continue. What? Red Bull. <laughs> That's bad for you, though. It has vitamins. There's vitamins right here listed on the, uh, the can. There's more than just vitamins in there. The other stuff is what's bad for you. Don't you dare say bad words about caffeine. <laughs> I don't do caffeine anymore. It's bad for you. Who are you and what have you done with Nash? I haven't done caffeine for years, man. It's bad for you. Anyway. Okay, so what have we got this week? Well, we got one story that leads into another story in a way. Um, first, uh, the big, big news of the week, at least as far as video games go, is Fallout is being released on yes. Tuesday. Fallout yes. is the, the Fallout 4 is finally coming out after seven years after Fallout 3. And it's big news and everybody is anxious to play it. You know what the best thing about Tuesday release is? What? I've got Wednesday off this week. <laughs> it's a federal holiday. Well, unfortunately for Bethesda and for just about everybody, um, while most people were, were willing and able to wait until uh, Tuesday, Germany didn't. And the big news is the street date on Fallout 4 was broken. But only for the PS4. And I believe God. also for the Xbox as well, but mainly for the PS4. And here is why. Um, now... Not Tuesday in Germany already, I know that. Now, what's going on, why this is a problem, is... It, Bethesda opted to do something, at least for them, really smart with the PC release, but it was something they couldn't exactly do with console releases. What's that? On PC, in order to play Fallout, you must have a Steam account, and that's even if you go to the store and buy a physical DVD copy of Fallout. This will keep you from playing it until Tuesday. Because that copy you buy from the store, that DVD, only contains five gigabytes of the game. Ah. The complete install for Fallout 4 is 24 gigabytes. The rest of which you have to download from Steam. Sucks to be you if you're on Comcast. And once you download it from Steam, uh, even the, you can, I've already have it, I already have it downloaded and waiting on my machine. What Steam does, however, is it encrypts that download and it only unlocks that download on the release date. Yeah. Now the PS4 and Xbox One, correct me, I believe Xbox One, correct me if I'm wrong on this one. I know the PS4 definitely. They use Blu-ray. Yes. Which I is... I know the PS4 does. The PS4 Blu-ray of Fallout 4 is the entire game. Oh, yeah. Right there, already available, already working, already... And that's exactly what happened, because once these discs got out, they ended up on PS4s, and people went straight to Twitch. Of 
course. I saw your post about it. You posted a Twitter thing about it. Oh my God. It was amazing today. I was having a grand old time because... You were, you were trolling some motherfuckers. I was... I personally was not. I was just sitting back and watching the chaos. Ex excuse me. I, I saw your posts. Yeah, I will. No, you were trolling a little bit. I was trolling a little bit. I wasn't actually in their channels trolling, but I was trolling a bit because the there were hundreds, hundreds of streams went up on Twitch for Fallout 4, and they were just banning after banning after banning, and the people who were watching got in on the fun, and they started the ban patrol. And they were jumping from stream to stream, following. The, it was just just trolling. And putting up the putting up the streams were going. Please don't ban my stream. Banned. Yes, because um, Twitch has has a strict policy. They work with the game publishers. And if the publish if the publishers say, "Do not allow this to be streamed until the release date," Twitch will ban you. Now, is it a permanent ban or is it a temporary? It depends. It that is entirely what a jerk. You are. Some people were getting banned and making new accounts and coming right back, and that didn't work. It was. It was just. It was a bloodbath to watch. I suppose if you were doing the private stream, they might not ban you, but then you're not getting the hits you want. Yeah, it, so why, now the question might be, why am I bringing all this up in regards to tech? This is a gaming thing. I'll kind of tell you. I was hoping you would. What just happened here is likely going to be the excuse Bethesda uses for Elder Scrolls Six, and probably quite another a number of large publishers of AAA games to follow to kill the first sale doctrine. Let, let, let me get here. Um, the first sale doctrine is part of copyright. Part of copyright law, yeah. That used to be applied to books and has stretched to video games over the years. It says that if you, now, used to be you could walk into a bookstore Buy a copy of a paperback or any old book you wanted, read that, and then if you wanted to, walk down to your local used bookstore and sell them that copy. And this worked for CDs, music. It said you had the right to resell that copy once you purchased it. That's the first sale, Doctor. In yeah. a nutshell, roughly in a nutshell. It says if you owned a physical copy of media, you all had the right to resell it. And that also was stretched to apply to video games as time went on. If you owned a cartridge, and then if you owned a disc... And the video game companies didn't like that, uh, really, because unlike a book, which would get worn out relatively easily, um, the, the cartridge could last for a long time if you didn't beat it up. Yeah, and it, technically, the game did not lose its value. GameStop might argue with you on this. But technically, the game still retained its playability. A used copy of a game is just as good as a brand new copy of a game. Yep. But what I foresee what's going to happen here is Bethesda is going to do with their next release what they've already done with Steam. What I foresee is they will still sell discs for PS4 and Xbox One. But what's going to be on those discs is only a piece of the install for the game. And in order to get the rest of it, you're going to need a serial key. And once that serial key is used... No one else can use it. No one else can uh, use it. I seem to recall someone trying this in the past and not having a lot of luck, but it may be that their game was crap and no one bought it, so it wasn't really an issue. It may be, but also on top of that, Steam has proved that this works because the game is sold like gangbusters. People are obviously willing to put up with it. 
Um, it hasn't been a problem and it's kept, there are no, no torrents of Fallout 4 as we speak. Now, you might say, oh, wait, I saw one. Check again. What? Well, no, what that torrent is, is they call it a preload torrent. Ah. It's the same Steam data that's locked with encryption. Ain't nobody can do shit with it. They can download it, they can torrent it, they can make it available, but ain't nobody can do shit with it. So good luck unlocking that unless you actually want the game. Right. What's going to happen is, sure, you can buy a cop. I, I really see this happening, especially with shit like what happened today. It, it the, the huge leaks for this game, the big, uh, much hype, much anticipated game, and it leaks days early, and everybody's playing it early, and it just. Oh, I also think they're going to yell at Germany. Well, oh, oh yeah. Oh, it, the the stores involved GameStop Ger Germany was involved a couple others were involved they have obviously violated their contract with Bethesda and there are going to be repercussions and but on top of that I can see this has probably worked out very well for Bethesda because there was no private there was no piracy yeah and in they, they're going to look at this and realize in the future, if people are willing to do this for PC games, they'll be willing to put up with this for console games. And in addition, they won't have to deal with the resale shit anymore. Maybe, maybe not. And the reason I say maybe, maybe not is because as uh, console games get more complex, you've got only so, so much space in the hard drives they give you with those. And while some people are willing to violate their warranties to install bigger and better hard drives, Others aren't. Actually, it doesn't violate your warranty to install a new hard drive. Okay, it used to. I want to say on the PS... Maybe it was the PS3 that, you know, they said, oh, yeah. well, you violate your warranty when you do that. But anyway, regardless, uh, there's going to come a point where someone goes, oh, I've got to delete, like, three other games to put this on here. And that, well, that's where you're going to run into stuff. You have to but, delete the games anyway. It, you have to install these games. They don't run from the Blu-ray. That 24 yeah. gigabyte install size works out to a 40 gigabyte once it's on the game system. Sure, sure, sure. But my point is, uh, when they look at it and go, this is a, a, a Blu-ray DVD and it's going to expand up to 40 gig, they've got a good estimate of that. When they go, oh, it's one Blu-ray, but it's going to expand up to 120 because they put so much Maybe. stuff on here. Uh, I, I gotta hold off on getting this. I don't have the room. Maybe so it's, it's a it's a it's a balancing act as to what they're gonna be able to do. Maybe, but you, you know, in general, I'm I'm pretty sure that this is is going to be a foot in the door towards killing off that, and and they are going to point to what happened with the Fallout Four launch as their excuse. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they'll, they can use it as an excuse how many people buy it. Who knows? So this... And buy it as in buy the excuse, not buy the game. People are going to buy Fallout 4 like gangbusters. Yeah, I already bought the damn thing. I haven't yet. But I was, two months ago. I, w I was waiting to see just on the off chance. Yes, I know it was BlizzCon. There'd be a stall outside. Someone legitimately selling Fallout 4 cheap. You know, oh, it's, it's a gaming convention. Let's set up a stall. <laughs> Didn't happen. I almost got a copy of uh, StarCraft II, but I wasn't wearing a StarCraft II t-shirt. And they just given me a StarCraft II t-shirt, and they said, no, that one doesn't count when I went to put it on. Well, the new StarCraft II game comes out a couple days from now, and so they're giving out copies of the old one, because it's released in three sections. Right, like yeah. Like one a year or something like that. Well, that's bullshit. It Now, this so this leads into the next bit because okay, I, like I was saying earlier that install file for Fallout Four on my PC, twenty four gigabytes for one game. Yeah. Oh, we're getting some background noise from you, Mike. We are. Yeah, like some <laughs> kind of noise. Hang on a second. Like crackly noises. 
Is that any better? No. I don't know what it could be. Ah, well. well. I don't hear any crackly noises. We'll run with it. Hopefully my, my noise gate catches it. Um. So, like I was saying, this is 24 gigabytes. GTA 5 was much bigger. I think GTA 5 was on the order of somewhere like 60 gigabyte download. The, the, these games, uh, Wolfenstein, well, I, I got Wolfenstein, the new order. That was 50 gigabytes. Um, these huge, huge files, comparatively. Um, and this is becoming the norm, the, these size downloads. This is also going to start becoming an issue when 4K streaming starts picking up. I mean, we already yeah. we already have uh, stuff with uh, with Netflix, with with Amazon uh, Prime and whatnot, streaming and, and YouTube, obviously. Uh, streaming resolutions have gotten bigger, bigger. This is going to start becoming an issue, and where this starts to hit home is data caps. Data caps. Comcast is now. Screw you, Comcast. Comcast is rolling out their uh, data caps across the nation it was it was restrained to certain parts of the country now it's slowly picking up even further um here's how it works you are allowed 300 gigabytes of data that includes upstream and downstream yeah uh so that's uploading downloading whatever it is you get 300 gigabytes of data if you go over that 300 gigabytes of data, you have to spend $10 for every 50 gigabytes you go over, or you could just upfront pay for Comcast Unlimited for an additional $30 every month and not have to worry about the data caps. Ah, well, let me note something there. Comcast is very specifically saying, oh no, it's not a data cap. That That's part, because what happened was the script, the customer service script for these data caps leaked this week. And what's making this, oh, what's pissing me off so bad about this. The script involves, okay, here's, here's the do's and don'ts on the policy. Current policy, do say customers in non-trial areas have a 250 gigabyte usage data plan although we are currently not enforcing this policy. Don't say customers in non-trial areas have unlimited data usage. <laughs> Do say customers in trial markets have their data usage plan increased to 300 gigabytes. Don't say customers in non-trial areas have a 300 gigabyte plan. Do say data usage plan. Don't say data cap. This is not a cap. We're not limiting the use of data in any way above 300 gigabytes. Now, all right. We're just limiting what they get for their money. Monetary limitation is still a fucking limitation. And finally, the one that's just pissing me off to no end, do say the reason Fairness and providing a more flexible policy to our customers don't say the program is about congestion management. It's not. And then, well, the reason they say that one is if they did, they have to justify that to the FCC. And there should be a second don't say. Don't say this isn't about lining the pockets of our shareholders, though it absolutely is. Fairness and providing a more flexible policy to our customers. They don't explain what fairness means. If there's... I, want, I wonder if, if you have, were on the call with them, you know, say, fairness to who? If there's... Do they, do they elevate you then? Yeah. They go, we've got to send you to a higher level customer service person. If it's not a problem with the network, yeah. if there's not a speed issue, if there's not a congestion issue, fairness to who? Because 
there doesn't seem to be any problems getting me that amount of data. Especially when I give you money, I'm not taking it away from someone else. I'm not limiting their usage with my usage. So what the fuck are you talking about? They have a list, uh, I saw it somewhere, of things that don't count against your data limit. Including Comcast streaming services. Right. Which... And there was something else. There was something else that was kind of big. But I don't remember what it was. Basically stuff that competes with other things that, com that, that Comcast offers. They apply. If they don't, yeah. if Comcast offers it, they don't apply. Now, you mentioned uh, getting escalated. If, if you mention the words net neutrality, <laughs> um, Netflix, or you taught, you actually say, well, why aren't Xfinity services counted against my data cap? The script says immediately escalate to customer security assurance. That's retention. That's okay, what, wait, that's retention. Okay, I, I can just, customer assurance, I can see his retention. Why do they have, feel the need to put security in there? Yeah, well, I, I want to, you know, why is Netflix not exempt? Oh, we need to elevate you and they zap you through your phone and go, you will use Xfinity. It's like a little flashy thing on your phone, men in black. Now, on the other hand, you could use this to cut straight through the bullshit when dealing with a Comcast customer ref. Just say net neutrality and you get escalated immediately. So there is that. You got some magic words now, kids. Use them. Just when you yeah. get on the line and that, that, that customer service rep starts droning on and it's obvious they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, say the words net neutrality and it's the fast lane. Hey, we've just... There's your fast lane, Comcast. We've used net neutrality to provide a fast lane through your fucking customer service. It would work, too. Uh, this is... Now, this is going to be a... Where this comes in with fall... All right. Say, for example, you are in a house with more than one person. Even by myself. Now, I, I, I think I'm atypical because I use this for my job. I upload stuff for the show. I stream for the show like I'm doing right now. I go over 300 every month. Every but fucking a, month. Do you have a business account? No. Okay. So you could qualify for a business account. Maybe I could. Maybe I couldn't. But I, I, every, every month I go over that 300 gigabytes. I know people, two people, just two people using the internet on a regular basis. For Netflix, for YouTube, for gaming. You're going to go over that 300 gigabytes. What this means is your $60 copy of Fallout could end up costing you closer to 100 if you have to get the unlimited service. And this is going to be a problem across the entire tech sector. Because right now we have companies that want to offer us the Internet of Things. They want to offer us a fridge that's connected to the internet. They want to offer us light bulbs that are connected to the internet. My television requires downloads from the internet to update on a regular basis. My TV. Um, my phone. Oh, I remember what the other thing that Comcast doesn't count against your limits. Hmm. That uh, thing where you can share your wireless connection with random other right. Comcast people. Right, right. That um, doesn't count. Apparently it counts against their, their account, not yours, exactly. Um, and part of me wonders how that works. Okay, so say I have an account where I am not limited. You know, they're not enforcing it. And I'm in one of the cities where they are enforcing it and I'm using someone's stuff there. Is it using that city's rules or my home city's rules? Meow. And I'm willing to bet that uh, network issues where, you know, hey, there's a lot of latency, so there's a lot of retransmitted packets and, and such when that get counted against you. You know, so, oh, the network is crap today. Why is my usage going up so much? Because it's got to resend. It's got to resend. It's got, and you're sending that data and it, it, um, 
so so yeah, right now in my house, right now, just me, my phone, my tablet, my laptop, my desktop, and my TV all require, oh, and my router, all require internet connections and internet updates. They're all internet connected devices. They're all using data. Am I going to have to start rationing my own devices? And if so, is that going to affect how people decide to buy devices in the future? Or patch devices. Windows, oh, holy I need, crap. I need to patch my laptop. I guess I'm gonna go to Starbucks so I don't use my account. Yeah, or, or Christ, um, you know, uh, Windows 10, huge ass downloads that you cannot shut off those updates. Those are mandatory if you can, but you have to dig the fuck down to shut those updates off. And they're big. They're hundreds of megabytes, sometimes gigabytes, depending on what sort of uh, patch is getting sent to you. They're big. Windows 10 alone is at least two, three gig. Well, it's 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 up there. It's a DVD worth of install size. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to get ugly. I suspect they'll be investigated by the FCC at least on one or two issues. This, this is, but th this is one of those things that could have a ripple effect and slow down the tech sector and tech economy because people are going to look at devices that are internet connected and decide, is it really worth an extra $30 per month on my internet account to buy this internet connected device? Because it could potentially push me over my limit and I don't wanna fucking do that. Is it worth it? And that that's, that's going to limit a lot of things. And that's not good. That's not good for many, I don't think, tech manufacturers like this. I don't think game makers like this. I don't think software makers like this. This is going to be a little bit of a battleground going forward. Ugh. Oh, and God help you if your hard drive crashes and you have to reinstall all your Steam shit. <laughs> yeah. You fucked! But our last story tonight is actually a, a, a neat one. Just, I, I wanted to end this one on something that's kind of fuck yeah science that I fucking okay. loved. All right. Computers have two main problems, heat and electricity. And as processors have gotten smaller and smaller and, and more- faster and faster. Yeah, and fast, and more transistors are placed on a die the problem of keeping that die powered and cool has gotten more difficult because a, a, a transistor, a, a CPU has what's, they're typically called hotspots. And that's where the, the electricity is being used the most. It, it generates the most power. But those hotspots have gotten smaller and smaller as the heat on it and getting the heat transferred off of those smaller and smaller spots as the chips have gotten smaller has become problematic. Yeah, because you have less surface area to connect to your heat sink and dissipate the heat. So it, it, it limits systems. IBM has come up with a fascinating solution to this that could eventually be how we do things in the future. Electronic blood. Okay. They are devising a liquid that is both conductive and transmits heat away from the processor. Why would you want to conduct, oh, to provide the power? Right. The, 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 the fluid is going to both power the processor and cool it at the same time. I'm going to have to see some papers on how this is going to work because I, okay, sure. Sounds neat. They call it, they, they call it 5D electronic blood. Okay. And it is, it's, I, I love the future. <laughs> electronic blood for computers. Holy shit. This is the future. I love it. It, it. You know, it actually, since it makes a lot of sense because we're already in an era where 
water cooling is becoming um, more widespread. I mean, we have closed loop coolers that require no no fussing about on the consumer part. It's, until it's, they break. Until they break, yeah. But it's a self-contained water cooler that you don't have to refill, you don't have to, to futz with, you just slap it in there and you go. And this, so we're already at a point where water cooling is starting to become generally accepted among computer enthusiasts. To, to take it that next step further where the, this, this fluid pumping and ele electronic blood is part of a standard computer. I love that. It, it is a neat concept. And if they can get it to work, it will be, it will mean you'll be able to make computers faster with less concern about heat and things. It, it, it's going to be great for processors in general. Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures of this and uh, the, the one that got me is, you know, it says, okay, the charged liquid flows in, provides power and then flows out where it has to be recharged. Okay. Um, interesting. It that works like it. it works like the uh, the fluid in a battery. Okay. It, it w works like you know you, you charge the battery and then it, it it that dissipates. It runs out. It comes back. However, I do want to point out that <laughs> if you there's a video on ours, and I encourage you to go to ours tent and read this story because it really is fascinating. There's a video on ours where they talk, the, the, the guys demonstrate it, or the, they're, they're prototypes, and they mention they had a problem with some of the early ones. Some of them leaked. Some of them exploded. <laughs> That's actually kind of neat. You know you're doing science when shit blows up. That, that is, that is officially science. It's not science until something has exploded. I noticed just on the, the still screen for the video. He's got the computer there. He's pointing yeah. various things. And there's a roll of paper towels right there next to it. <laughs> like, yes. It's, it's, it's not, a, for those just listening, it's not a thing of Kleenex, you know, which, okay, you might expect by a computer nerd's uh, computer. But no, it is a roll of paper towels. Like, oh, shit, it spilled again. Clean this shit up. <laughs> I was kind of hoping, you know, just in this still, because I'm not going to play the video now, obviously, but that maybe it stains the table or it's caustic and it's eating eating through things. And that's that, why it blew up. Actually not caustic. However, I think they, they just, the early processor designs they had to work with this were overloaded and went kablooey. I love that. It turns out it reacts very poorly to... Uh, Particle board, so we do not recommend that. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, now it's uh, it's that part of the the show where we uh, we start answering uh, your tech questions. There were some interesting ones this week, I think. Yeah, let, let's uh, let's start with one from uh, Kyle. Uh, it says, um, "I'm looking to get a computer for gaming. Was interested in either building one, perhaps purchasing a laptop that can accomplish what I want and last a few years." However, I don't have a large amount of money to work with. The ceiling would be extreme at roughly 2000 but prefer something 1500 or less. I was wondering if you had a website that might help teach him building a gaming rig to a simpleton, or if you take some time and a nice list of pieces to look at for a gaming laptop, which you'd recommend in the market, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, uh, we're coming up on that time of the year. I want to say it's either end of this month, beginning next month, I, I think is when Ars Technica traditionally does their... It's a new year, build a gaming rig, yeah. series of articles. I think it was then where they do a low, medium, and high build. Uh, and that's a good place to start. Um, even looking at last year's stuff probably isn't too bad just to go, okay, this is the sort of things I should be looking. Because the prices they're going to list have come down. Um, what do you have? Well, another good site that they do monthly updates on hardware is Tom's Hardware. Oh, yeah. Tom's. Tom's Hardware will give you a monthly breakdown on the best hard drives, the best video cards, and the best processors for your money. Um, and we'll also do a, they also do, a, I want to say, a periodic low, medium, and high build. They do those too. 
Now, if you want uh, help on exactly how to get it done, Newegg actually does videos that will show you step by step how to assemble a computer from scratch. Yeah. Bingo, bango, bongo, you're all set. Um, in general, well, go ahead. My recommendation, if you're gonna be building something, the first thing you should, if you're gonna be building, say, a desktop, because obviously if you're not gonna be building a laptop, no one's that crazy. <laughs> okay, you are. Uh, measure the space you're going to put it in first. Yeah. Account for a couple inches for wheels to roll around. Uh, account for cables coming out the back. Mm. You'd be surprised how often people forget. I think I'm gonna put this in here. Oh, well my cables don't fit now. I'll stick three inches further than I wanted because of cables. So certainly do that. I prefer, this is just my personal preference. I prefer a bigger chassis, just so I've got more room to maneuver around. I'm not sitting there trying to, well, my arm doesn't quite bend the way I need to get it to, to get this piece to go in. Oh yeah, I love, most most people can get by just fine with what's called a mid-size PC case. I love full-size cases. Oh yeah, they're big. They're they they're great for for air cooling because they have plenty of space to draw in air and put it back out again. They and can handle space for extra fans. Yeah, and they can handle larger fans too, which is great. Larger fans push more air, do it more quietly. Love them. Uh, in general terms, I'd say for a gaming PC, and this is generally kind of a rule of thumb, um, an i5 is all you're going to need. Don't worry about go jumping up to an i7 unless you're going to be using it for video editing or CAD or more more calculation intensive stuff because most or unless Or unless someone is offering a really good deal on them and they're not the kind of sketchy shop that looks like they got the stuff off the back of the truck. Right. Um, i5 is all you really need for a gaming PC. Um, what with a gaming PC, you're going to want to more concentrate on your graphics card. We've said this quite often. That's what does most of the work with video games today. Uh, MSI it, makes great cards. MSI makes great cards. I, I'm an NVIDIA fan, not because I'm a big fan of NVIDIA, because Price performance ratio is better right now than AMD. Yeah, when, when I say when I say MSI, by the way, it's the MSI brand on right. NVIDIA chipset. MSI is good. Um, uh, AV, AVGA. AVGA is another good one. ASUS is good. Or I'm probably people are going to get on me because I'm probably saying that wrong. I, I know it's ASUS. 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 Whatever. Oh, it's um, like the nine pronunciations of McAfee. Um, Gigabyte is also, I, I use a Gigabyte motherboard and uh, video card. Those are, those are good ones. Um, I'd stay away from Zotac and there's another one that starts with a P, which I kind of steer away from. Uh, they're kind of a, a low, pick, pick something. They're, they're, they're one of the low end. So yeah. kind of, kind of stay away uh, from them. But I agree with Nash, where you should put, um, uh, more, a little bit more money is definitely the video card. Because as long as you're not mistreating the thing horribly by letting it overheat for some strange reason uh, for extreme amounts of time, uh, then it's going to last you uh, longer than many of your other components. Uh, yeah, that's not to say you're not going to want to sit there and go two years from now, man, I wish I had the money to get this better video card. This game looks so much better under this. Uh, I just, I, by the way, this week, I just had my first regret on my new video card. What'd you get? I got a, a, a an MSI card. Mm -hmm. It's not regret in that it's it's still massively powerful. It's great. Does everything I need it to. It runs significantly cooler than my previous card, which is great during the summer months because my room wasn't heating up. But now that it's starting to cool off a little bit, I'm like, my room is not as toasty as it used to. <laughs> you, you, doubling your computer as a space heater. <laughs> um. Obviously, double check. Make sure you get a good power supply. Corsair, I would recommend. Yes, um, I, I, but I always over spec my power supply. Mm. I would rather have an extra 100, 150 or more watts than I need than to go, everything counts out to 650. I'll get a 650. No. Give yourself room to maneuver. Yeah, because that way, when you're sitting there and you're going, 
I want to upgrade this relatively small component. Oh, that new one requires an extra 25 watts or whatever. It shouldn't if it's a small component, but hey. Uh, you're not sitting there going, oh, why is my computer booting now? Or why is it acting strange? Uh, I'd recommend EarthTech, ThermalTank, or Corsair. Corsair especially, because they have these damn quiet power supplies. Whisper quiet, and they work fantastically. I, you barely even know the damn thing is on. It's great. And uh, I would also, in the power supply area, look for ones that have the modular cording systems. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, you're only plugging in the power cords that you need to supply your stuff, and not you don't have, like, five or six extra yeah. sitting, hanging loose just cluttering up the computer. Obviously, put those in a Ziploc bag, you put them in the sock drawer, someplace you can find them. And, you know, so when you go, I, I want to add an expansion card. Where do my power cords go? Keep track of those. Um, for memory, 16 gigabytes is, more, is well more than sufficient for just about everything at the moment. But keep an eye on your motherboard. Make sure you have slots on it that will allow you to expand later, should you need it. Yeah. Uh, I think I only use 12 uh, on mine. Yeah. But again, it's... But I, bumped up, I don't remember. I, I have to look and see what my exact specs are. It's been so long since I've bumped up memory on here. And, and, but again, in terms of building it, uh, Newegg has wonderful step-by-step -step videos. They're very informative, very fantastic. They'll tell you exactly how to do everything you need to do. And if you buy your parts off Newegg, they have a really good return policy in yeah. case you get something that doesn't work. Yeah. Which occasionally they've had to have a good return policy because, you know, someone's bought something and it's gone, no, this one didn't work, they send it back, get a second one, that one didn't work. I wonder if this line is crap. Send it back, third one, okay, that worked. They're really, they're really responsive uh, yeah. and they are very customer oriented. Well, it's, all right. So that, that pretty much handles that. Let's move on to our next one's from James. He says, been in the market for a new router. I uh, decided to go with the, the Asus RTAC68U that we recommended. Uh, seems to be a hefty and great piece of kit with one problem. There is no ADSL connection, which likely means there's no internal modem, like my old one had. Thus, I couldn't connect it to my DSL adapter in the phone line and a new modem to be paired with it. On further scouting, I found another, another model. Um, it, now, he asks us, what would be the best external modem to get? Another router compatible with an internal DSL or whether he should get the DSL router combo from Asus. Um, you don't need to get anything. Because that router modem you had before will still work. All you have to do, and you may need to look up the model number on the, the modem you already had and uh, the make and model. Go online and look up the instructions on how to disable the router part of it. Yeah. So all you have to do, it's, it, while with most router modem combos, there is a way to disable the router part. And it will act just like a modem. It won't do any of the routing stuff. It will be just a modem by itself. And there you go. You're all set. You can keep that router you've already purchased. Which, personally, for myself, I don't like router modem combos. I don't like DSL, but hey. Well, but, you usually can't help it. If it's what, what you well, that is one of the reasons. Because say you decide to get cable later or, or Google Fiber later, your router modem, it's, you, your modem is built into it. You'd have to disable the modem part of it, and you've got a problem there. Or if the router part goes bad, your modem is shot. If the modem part goes bad, your router is shot. I don't like those combos for that. It 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 it's extra point of failure, and that's yeah. not now. Good. If it turns out that this is not doable, uh, it, then certainly please contact us again. We'll provide some recommendations. Uh, I've not had DSL for over a decade. Yeah. So I don't really have a lot of information about what you should get here. Um, I, you know, if it's, if you can find an inexpensive DSL modem, if this other one is not, uh, capable of being, you know, having the router part shut off. Yeah. Uh, the, then the, the channels remind me the, the keyword you need to look for is how to set it to bridge mode. That's when you look up how to shut off the road, the router, you want to look how to turn it into bridge mode. 
That that's the keywords. <clears throat> yeah, and that it, it, it's probably doable. Most of them are. Yeah. Like I say just from what I've heard, like I say, I haven't used DSL in a decade. <clears throat> so that that's probably that's that's going to be your best bit. It, it'll save you. You already have the router, and that's good because you have it separate. It'll save you some money because with the DSL modem, I'm pretty sure you're probably that's getting, your bottleneck. That that yeah, that, that's your big bottleneck there. All right. Um, next one comes from uh, David. He says, "So I have a gaming PC I use to play games, which has an NVIDIA video NVIDIA video driver." And your comment about the GeForce experience uh, made. And we talked about that a while back. Uh, Basically, when I try to download a new driver, an error message saying the PC isn't connected to the internet, despite that not being the case, pops up. Any idea what's causing this? No, because I'm having the same damn problem. Hang uh, on a second. I have uh, GeForce experience in theory on here, too. Uh, let me see if I'm firing that up really quickly and see if I have the same problem. Just today, I was attempting to get the latest driver because I'm I want to get the the game ready driver for Fallout Four. I wonder why. And it could not connect to the internet. Could not connect to my NVIDIA account. It was a pain in the fucking ass. Are you using wireless? No. Okay, you're wired. Yes. Is that my my first guess? Be somehow it's not talking to the wireless connection properly, or it's not. Uh, Asking the wireless connection properly. Oh, fuck no. I stream with this thing. I use a hard line. Okay, let's see here. This is a game ready driver for Call of Duty. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck your Call of Duty. Call of Duty. It, it's a first person shooter. I really don't care. Screw your Call of Duty. Call of Duty. The only one pl I've played in in the first-person shooter genre, aside from when I was in college and we played Team Fortress a whole hell of a lot, was uh, Deus Ex. Because there's a story there rather than just running around a board shooting things. Yeah. Um, um, mine seems to be downloading stuff fine. Yeah, it's, it's a comes and goes problem. Honestly, right now, I don't have a good solution for this other than... I'm going to pause the download so I don't interfere with the stream, but... For the moment, you can still download drivers from NVIDIA's website. I would recommend doing that just to be on the safe side. When you can no longer do that, it might be a bigger problem. Right now, I don't know what's causing this, and this is part of... God, I hate this GeForce experience. The GeForce experience, ladies and gentlemen, is frustration. My, my only thought on this is if this is a recent thing that is happening, it may be that that's the error message that pops up when they can't connect to NVIDIA, which was their servers getting overwhelmed by one million people trying to download the game uh, ready driver for Fallout. Right. And so I, check, check off times, you know, you know, a lot yeah. of people that come home, they you know, first thing they do is they do something on the computer. So between five and six, my neighborhood is congested. Our internet's a lot slower than it would normally otherwise be because adults have come home. Same thing right after three when the kids get out of school, sort of deal. Uh, and it's like it's like a day after it's like Christmas Day and the day after Christmas. You don't try to do massive things on the internet on those days. Everyone's trying out their new games. So yeah, at this at this point, it's mainly the GeForce experience is not the best designed piece of software. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd say it can only get better, but it's GeForce. They'll find some way to screw up. All right. Let's see. Um, boo, boo, boo. Uh, all right. Valerie asks us, I'm in the process of researching for a new laptop. My problem's twofold. First part is I used a Sony VAIO PCs for as long as I can remember. And that line was discontinued. The other problem is I'm not exactly impressed with Windows 8 or 10, nor am I optimist about the direction in which Microsoft is heading. Do I wait and see how Windows 11 turns out? That's going to be a ways off. Yeah. Um, and if so, do you have, an, or do I bite the bullet and just get a Mac? If it helps, I'm not a gamer programmer, nor am I a digital artist. Most of I do need, just need something to run Chrome and Firefox plus some sort of word processor, which I'm hesitant to buy a Mac because it would be 
a twelve hundred dollar tumbler machine. Thank you for your um, time. My first thought, and this is maybe you can back this up or shoot me down here. Why not get a Chromebook? If you're only if you're only doing search the web and uh, doing uh, word processing, I think that covers you, right? There's yeah. Word processing on Chromebook. Yeah, there because through Google Docs. Yeah. Yeah. Chromebook uses I mean, Google, Google Docs. Docs has a little bit of ways to go before it's you know 100 percent there as way for an office environment. But if you're if you're just doing it for personal use, you know, family, maybe school. Uh, it should be just fine. And a bonus, uh, Google is going to be merging the Chrome OS with Android. In theory, we'll see how that uh, follows through. Well, yeah, but what that will mean is that Chrome OS will will change into... It'll, it'll give a lot more apps. Right. It'll be an iteration of Android. It'll have access to more apps. It'll have access to more things that can do more things. Yeah. Emily, Emmy's pointing out, still can't Skype on a Chromebook. That is true. There are some things that a Chromebook can't do. But you can use Google Hangouts. <laughs> You're funny. Um, you can. I've played Cards Against Humanity many times <laughs> on Google Hangouts. We've had everyone's videos going on. It's been great. Um, I still hold the, the record in our group for number of people who have said they will not play as long as I am there. With one, I've driven a person out of Cards Against Humanity. By being an asshole. No. In cards against humanity. No. In car he no. Knew with cards against humanity, and I went too far. You, Mike? No. One, no. One, one too many poke jokes. No. All right. Uh, I, I, a Chromebook. Old Pope, not new Pope. If if you're <laughs> going to be perfectly fine with the bare basic computing, just get done what you need, get done. A Chromebook might suit you just fine. I would look yeah. into those and see, look at their features, look at what they can do and see, maybe that'll do it for you. Now, uh, if, if you decide that that won't, uh, there are some Windows 10 options out there that, uh, strange echo. Okay. Uh, well, it was window blinds. That was that software you told me about. Uh, Stardock.com. Yeah produces software to make Windows uh, 8 and 10 not look so bloody awful. Yeah. Uh, they have a start menu replacement, which makes it look like Windows 7 start menu with a few extra optional extras, uh, which are nice. And they've got a thing that makes the uh, interface yeah, you can not so gray and blocky. You Although can reskin the whole thing. It's not there yet. Or yeah. window blinds. Um, so if you get a sub two hundred or sub three hundred dollar machine for Windows ten, which you can easily do, uh, it'll handle everything you need. You'll still be able to do Skype and whatever. And uh, when you look at that, a sub three hundred dollar machine, that's effectively they're subsidizing Windows because that's a two hundred two hundred fifty dollar piece of software right there. So you're getting really cheap hardware. On the other hand, I can't say Macs are bad computers. I can't. Well, honestly, <laughs> in terms of the hardware offered and the support they give, and they, they Apple has the best they're, support in the industry. And there, you pay for that through the notes. Yeah, that is kind of what you're paying for up front when you buy a Macintosh. You're paying for Apple support. It, it's kind of like the support costs are being bundled into the price of the machine. You know, and it, it for, for your purposes, if you're concerned about having something that's going to work and work for a long time and have, you know, be supported by Apple, depending on, on the service plan you get, a yeah. Mac's not a bad option. It is and considering- if you have a genius bar relatively nearby to take stuff to uh, if it breaks. No, that's also, you know, a, a much better thing than, you know, your sub 200, sub $300 machine. You go, um, I take this back to Fry's or Best Buy or whoever you got it from. And they go, well, it's going to cost $200 to fix that. So you got to get a new one anyway. So it, it consider if you're not that technically inclined to begin with, and if you're concerned about these sort of things, it's an investment. 
Now, I and actually, I like the Mac OS. I really do. They make um, mice with two two buttons on them yet? Yes, you can, you can use a two button mouse with Mac OS. Um, but my biggest problem is I, as a power user, find the hardware limiting. And there are compatibility issues with other devices. There's backwards compatibility. Stuff that upgrade issues. Upgrade issues, yeah. But if those aren't concerns for you, a Mac is a good investment in the long term. But if if price is a big issue, don't worry. Uh Ace, we'll go back. I'll say Asus. Asus, they make really good laptops. You would not have a problem with an Asus. MSI makes good laptops. You can spend yeah. more money. MSI makes ex MSI um, makes excellent laptops. If you if you go with their, I'm not suggesting this for someone doing what you say you're doing, but the Republic of Gamer series are fantastic. Yeah. The the thing is, you may say I'm not a gamer. Why would I get a gaming laptop? Because they're overbuilt. They have power to spare. They they are rugged, and if you overbuild a computer, that extends its operational usefulness. If it's more powerful than you need it to be, it, it'll instead of having to replace it in three years or going obsolete, you know, it'll it'll stay with you five to seven years because it's way more powerful than you need it. So like what you find in most corporate environments, right? Where it's underpowered about on delivery, and you're sitting there going, "We have to use this for three more years." Right. Uh, so yeah, it's it's gaming laptops. Actually, if if you're not a power user they will stay with you a lot longer. So, so yeah, that, that, that wraps that up. Uh, let's see how much longer we got. Um, uh, let's go with a quick one to end us with. Okay. Uh, punk rocker think asks us, I upgraded the windows 10 from windows seven, on my home built computer and bought a new Logitech C 615 webcam to figure it out. I had an old Logitech C270 that had outdated drivers. When I plugged it into my USB 3.0 port, it acted as though it had just disconnected both the webcam and my external hard drive and the other USB 3.0 port. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, this is the... We're still in the transitional phase of USB 3.0. That That is what's going to happen. That, that's what's causing your problems here. Yeah. I think so. Also, you upgraded from Windows 10 from Windows 7. I'm pretty there may be some legacy shit still lingering. Windows 7 was notoriously bad on USB 3.0. Yeah. If you if, I agree uh if and uh I think it's probably probably a combination of drivers here. It's probably Windows driver and Logitech driver. Yeah. Probably probably conflicting with each other on something, which is why I said, why you say you keep getting disconnected. The, especially considering this Logitech C15 is not a USB 3.0 webcam. Yeah, it's USB 2. There aren't many of those. Windows goes all kind of wonky when you plug a USB 2.0 device into a USB 3.0 socket. If you have a USB 2 port, I would plug it into there, and that should resolve your issues. Yeah, that's the quick solution. If you don't, uh, you might consider desktop. Yeah, home-built computers to desktop. Uh, might consider an expansion card to get a couple USB 2 slots in there. If you can still find a USB 2 hmm. PCI card. And worst case scenario, you may need to do a clean install. Because since you went from Windows 7 to Windows 10, my gut is saying there's something in your registry, there's something lingering that's causing this issue. There's something else you can try that might work. Huh. And that is get yourself like a $20 USB 2 hub. Mm. Plug the hub into the USB 3 port. It'll recognize that most likely. And then you plug your devices into the USB hub. And it's doing all the translation, and that may may work. No guarantees. Yes. Um, if you if you go out to uh, you know, your local electronic store, Fry's, Best Buy, whatever you have, see if they have one that has where it's not uh, got the special plastic sealed device. So you go, right. oh, it didn't work. 
I can say it didn't work and take it back. Well, no, because it's not working for what you did. If you're not lying to them. Yeah. And they're not going to give you too much hassle over a $20 piece of equipment anyway. Yeah. But the quick, short, dirty fix for it is find a USB 2.0 port and plug it in there. Because, man, when these things came out, I was working in a hospital. When these things came out, we had brand new PCs running Windows 7 with Windows 3, with Windows, with USB 3.0 ports. And we were getting calls every fucking day because someone would plug a printer into the USB 3.0 port and suddenly and the, be able to print. it wouldn't print or it wouldn't recognize it would goof it up like crazy. It drove us nuts. My worst, just a uh, minor seg, my worst printer issue, this was uh, actually an entire computer ago and a different printer ago. My printer would not print if I had used the cable card in my computer. If I watched TV on my computer, my printer wouldn't print. I'd have to go into Task Manager and kill the video, the cable card uh, process, and then suddenly my printer would go, oh, shit, I got a lot of print here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's all really screwed. That's a case, so that's, a, that's an edge case you wouldn't expect to, no one would have thought of, what if he's watching TV on his computer when he tries to print? Somehow they conflicted. So yeah, um, absolutely. If you have a USB 2 port on there, give that a try. Uh, if you yeah. find or borrow a hub or buy one, worst case, give that a you know just a quick try. If it works, great. If it doesn't, you know you're not out anything you know particular. Um, hopefully, it'll straighten it out. USB 3.0 backward compatible. My ass. Um, and yeah, and and probably worst case in a couple months, there'll be patches out on various stuff. I would check Logitech's site right now if I were you. I mean, because they put up, they're, they're decent about patching their stuff. Sometimes they're inconvenient about patching their stuff. Uh, time to do the show. What do you mean they need to up download drivers? <laughs> Bastards. Well, folks, that's going to wrap it up for us. Um... Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, we'll have another one of these in two weeks. If you have questions you would like Mike and me to answer, once again, send them to requests at radiodeadair.com. Put tech Q&A in the subject line. Um, Mike, thank you as always. Sure, sure. Uh, and, and thank you for, for uh, working with me so I could go to BlizzCon. Yes, it was, that, it was that's why we did the Sunday. Minute, last minute thing. A uh, friend of a friend had someone cancel and... Uh, you're like, Mike, can you go? Uh, yeah, I live two hours away. And it turned out to be three and a half hours away because Southern California traffic sucks. And a two hour drive back because, you know, trying to go somewhere on a Friday afternoon sucks. Trying to go somewhere other than a Friday afternoon, not quite as bad. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you here next time.